This is McFly Angler. starts now. For a hook, you will want a long shank streamer hook like these Risen Streamer 300s, and today I'm tying a size 10. We will also need a cone head, and these Risens are a great price for the quality. Today I'm using gold, and a medium size to match the size 10 hook. The best way to add the cone to the hook is to place the cone in your hand, and then bring the hook point to it. However, the cone will not slide up over the hook barb, so here I am mashing the hook barb and then now we can slide the bead on the hook. Place the hook and cone securely in your vise. To add extra weight, let's wrap some of this 0.015 size lead free wire onto the hook. I like to make about 15 or so wraps with the wire to get it really heavy. Then add a drop of super glue on the shank and push the wire up under the cone. Now I need to talk about the thread here. I was originally gonna tie this in brown, but I ended up choosing chartreuse. However, I did not change out the thread, and instead of going back and refilming, I figured it would probably be good to show a weird color thread here for the fly to prove that the thread color really doesn't matter all that much. It will for the most part be hidden up under the cone head, and if tied right, it will not be seen at all. You will see later on. Okay, to start your thread right behind the lead bumps and snip off the waist. Then wrap loosely up over the wire and then back down the bend of the hook, then back up to right behind the wire once again. Now we need a body wrap. This sparkle braid in chartreuse works great, but you can use just about anything to wrap the hook with. Tie in the piece right behind the lead wraps and then wrap down to the start of the bend of the hook, and then come back up to just behind the wire once again. Now we need some wire. This gold medium sized ultra wire will work perfectly. Pull off a few inches of wire and then use some wire cutters to cut it off the spool. And a piece this long should tie a couple of these flies. Tie the wire in on the side of the hook so the tip extends to just behind the lead free wire. Then wrap down to the body wrap material and back up to just behind the cone head. Now make touching wraps up the hook shank with the body wrap until you reach the thread. Then capture it. And cut off the waist. Now we need some pine squirrel strips. They come in whole skins and many dyed colors like this brown one. By the way, this is the color I was originally going to tie this in. But you can also get smaller packs in a variety of colors as well. Today I will be tying a chartreuse. Grab a strip and pull off the fur right at the base of the strip. Shove the bare hide up into the bead and then make a few tight wraps to hold it into place. Once it's secure, then lightly wet your fingers and stroke the fibers up so they get angled upward like this. Then separate out a section of fur right behind the base of the hook. Do your best to wrap the wire through that split section of fur, trying to trap as little fibers as you can. Then make a spiral wrap up and separate the fibers once again to allow you to wrap through them with the wire. Keep doing this up the hook shank, trying to make even wraps up the shank like so. Once you reach the head, then capture the wire with a couple wraps and then pull the wire rearward and wrap over it there as well. This will ensure that the wire will not pull out or loosen. Now you can cut the tail to length. I usually like to cut it about the hook shank length. However, you can cut it a bit shorter or longer. It's up to you. Now strip some fibers off the squirrel strip again and tie it in right behind the cone head. Start making touching wraps while stroking the fibers back with each wrap. You will want to jam in as much fiber as you can behind the cone head there before capturing it with your thread and trimming off the waist. You can use your fingernail or a bodkin to push the thread and strip piece back up under the cone and out of the way. Now wet your fingers and stroke all the fibers rearward in order to allow you to whip finish easier. Now wet finish your fly under the cone.
For head cement, I like this water-based head cement. It will not gum up the squirrel collar, and it penetrates and gets deep under the cone to really lock everything in tight. Squeeze a little under the cone here, and then wait a minute and it will turn clear. Well, as you can see, there's a small section of brown showing. I guess I didn't do this perfectly, but it is possible to tie this so no thread will be visible. So the pine squirrel tail had a curved memory in the hide, which is changing the way the tail looks. Now this won't matter once it gets in the water, but for the video purposes, I wet the fly and let it dry before filming this part again. That looks much better. Okay, let me know in the comment section what you think of this fly, and if this is one you have fished with before. As you all know, I have gotten you all discounts from both www.risenfly.com and www.dooliesflyfishing.com. Dooley's offers great prices on all of the name brand fly tying materials, and Risen Fly manufactures their own hooks, rods, reels, and other gear for fly fishing. Their products are top quality, and best of all, they are priced very reasonably. Not only are the prices at these two shops great, but like I said, they are offering all of my subscribers a discount. So use McFly at checkout when ordering from either of these shops, and you will get an additional 15% off of their already great prices. I want to also thank all of my patrons who support me. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help support this channel and also get some great perks like early access to my videos, participate in live streams, and more. So go to www.patreon.com forward slash mcflyangler to sign up today. I also thank all of you who share all my videos with your friends and your continued support by hitting the like buttons and subscribing. Thank you for making these videos possible. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.